Uh, what's up everyone? It's been a long time, but I am out here today doing a tramp, an overnight one, um, making the most of this good weather and making the most of my free time. I'm out here today in Kaitoki. It's uh, just north of Upper Heart of New Zealand uh, and I'm doing an overnight tramp. I'm heading out, this is the Dobson Loop track from the YMCA of Kaitoki just there. Uh, I'm gonna head up to, I think it's Smith's Creek Hut and then up the Tohiri Nikau um, River Valley where I'm gonna find somewhere to camp the night Stay the night and uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do just yet uh, tomorrow but I'm planning on climbing a mountain somewhere along the way. So, hope you enjoy this two day camping trip. Let's get back into it. Really is a beautiful day today. Very thankful for that. Generally on New Zealand trails, if you see an orange triangle like that, you know you're on the right track. I've come 1.5 k's, I've got 5 k's until Smith's Creek Shelter. Alright, so I just passed over the puffer saddle, basically at the top of the hill from the car park that I started at, and now I'm heading back down the other side of the hill along Smith's Creek to Smith's Creek Hut uh, shelter. It's another four kilometers roundabout. Couldn't get any good views of the uh, car park or, or that side of the valley. Um, just because obviously all of this foliage and trees and stuff block the view. That's all right. So it's downhill for now, which is good because my knees were getting quite sore coming uphill there. Especially just liking this bag around. I'm not used to carrying big packs, at least not now, but I mean, I'll be doing it a lot more very soon. This is the first tramp and camp that I've been able to do for over six months, uh, so I'm very thankful to be out here today. And it's also a good time to test out my new gear that I have. So I've got uh, this new pack, the Osprey Rook 65, and I picked that up a couple weeks ago. Um, and this is my first time using it. So far, it's pretty good, and I'll uh, show you that in a bit more detail uh, later today. I'm also testing out for the first time my new shoes. They are Trail Runners Salomon Speed Cross Fives. They were also quite expensive. The pack was quite good. Um, about 250 New Zealand dollars. <laughs> Whereas the shoes are about 280 New Zealand dollars. So yeah, not cheap, but uh, they should last and they are really, really good. Oh, <laughs> battling through the mud and, and the foliage here. Yeah, I've got a bit more gear coming in. Uh, it's still being shipped to New Zealand at the moment that I ordered online, including a smaller sleeping mat. This one they've got packed on the side, it's quite big, but it is quite good though. Um, I've got a very small sleeping bag, that's another thing that I am testing out for the first time. Hopefully that's warm enough because it is very, very small and light. And I'm also waiting on a sleeping bag liner to go in it to keep me warmer and also just to protect it a bit better. I have also just bought a camp stove and a pot set um, that I'll be able to use to boil some water tonight and I'll be the first time using that as well. So yeah, I've bought all this new equipment, I've got some more stuff coming. Um, basically yeah, I just want to really get into this tramping and camping, backpacking life um, whenever I can. Make the most of it. Alright, here we are, made it to Smith's Creek. 
And now we're gonna just follow it down. Too easy. Sweet, let's keep going. Not far to go. Only, if you can see that, about 240 meters until the hut. Cool, that's where I've just been. Two to wire hut, that's kind of where I want to get to and maybe a bit further by the end of today. But I'm gonna stop off at Smith Creek Hut there, uh, the shelter, and uh, have lunch. Hmm, interesting. Oh, the window just smashed out here. There we go. Alright, uh, I'm gonna find somewhere to sit, probably just outside the hut and eat some lunch finally. Might actually go down to the river. Oh, nice little campsite here. Some people have had some fires. And look at that, we've made it to the river valley, the Tohari Nikau river valley. Might just chill here and have some lunch. Sweet as. here nice that it's sunny it is a little bit windy but it's supposed to drop off a bit later and tomorrow's gonna be very beautiful as well it's been the perfect temperature and it's been beautiful next step is to keep going on the track I'm gonna keep going that way yeah <laughs> keep going up the track keeps going up the valley and uh, what did it say it said a few about four or five k's to a two to wire hut um, I think so that's where I'm gonna head to next and then I'm going to decide what to do um, I've got a couple options I could either keep going or I could stay there um, I could go up the hill or I could keep going up the, further up the valley it all just depends on how good I'm feeling if I'm not sore what the weather's like uh, the trade conditions are like and just how quickly I can get there so let's get moving again all right All right, I've just checked the map. I've got another six or seven k's along this valley to get to the next hut. Run it. The valley runs uh, north, east, southwest, and yeah, as I said, it, it's aligned along a fault line. We are, of course, in the mountains in the Tararua Ranges, very tectonically active area, just like the entirety of New Zealand, essentially. Apples. What in the world is this? Now, so far, this section of the track has been way easier than the fine, than the last section before. Um, it's been flat, of course, going along, but pretty much the base of the river valley. Uh, whereas the last one was up and down some hills, and it was quite difficult on the legs. This one is a nice, easy walk in the park. just come across my first uh, relatively big river crossing and all I have here is a cable. Hopefully I can just get across the rocks without getting my feet wet. There's the cable. Right. Oh yeah, easy as that, to be honest. Yeah, the cable helped a little bit. Awesome. Woohoo, look at this. Got ourselves a swing bridge. Awesome. Quite wobbly, but yeah, it's so cool. Right, pretty much in the middle. Look at that. 
Walking back down the valley there. Beautiful, man. This is so cool. All right, that sign just here says two and a half hours to go to the hut. Just come off the track a little bit here because look at this view. Woohoo. Oh, drops down a lot right here. Thankfully my shoes are really grippy. I love them. Yeah, this forest walk has been so beautiful. Really, really nice. And perfect temperature as well. Pretty much there. Haven't seen the hut just yet, though. But uh, yeah, this last section has been pretty hot, uh, with the sun bearing down from just over there, and it's been quite clear as well. Like, uh, not so much trees around, quite a clearing like this, but it's been really beautiful. Oh, I can see the hut just up in the trees there. I think the sign's half broken, but uh, what does it say? The bridge that we crossed was two hours, 45 minutes ago. Yeah, it's around about right. Same for the Smith Creek. And Cone Hut, another two hours. But this is broken. So, uh, I mean, I guess the hut is up here. And of course, I had to climb a whole bunch of steps, steps to get up here. Here we go. So this is us. I wonder if there's anyone here. Tutu Wai Hut. Let's have a look inside. Yeah, I'm the only one here. Very cool. It is very hot in here. <laughs> I'm gonna go back outside where it's actually a little bit cooler. Awesome. All right, so I'm just chilling here at the hut. I've uh, just been looking at the map and deciding what I should do because it's about 4.30 right now. I still have a good three hours, I think, of daylight left. Um, and I'm still a little bit away from my goal. My goal was to climb to the very tops of the ranges here, which is a huge climb, but it's still quite a while away. And so I've been looking at the map and about six Ks up a hill, but probably a thousand meters of climb is the next hut, is Alpha Hut. Um, and I'm just wondering like, oh, I don't know, do I feel like doing that? I already have a really sore back from uh, carrying this bad boy. Oh man, that doesn't look promising. That's where I'm supposed to be going, Alpha Heart. If it's five hours and I have to top that mountain, that is gonna be a huge ask. You know what, I don't think I can do that. I think that's a sensible thing to do, to just stay down here, camp the night by the river, and then hopefully, Maybe get up there tomorrow, but I'll have to think about getting back to the car tomorrow. That's all right. No problem. All right, I'll uh, take you down here to the river. Huh. I'd have to cross it anyway. Don't even know where to go. All right, so I just uh, crossed the river back there. I took my shoes off and uh, fuck, it was cold. Uh, uh, but no, I did find the track that I need to take tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and I've made the decision to do it tomorrow, not today. Yeah, it just wouldn't, wouldn't be that safe today. At least by staying here right now, I have the certainty that I have a good place to camp. 
because if I did that way I might not make it to the hut and I might have to camp along the trail which might not be very comfortable so uh, yeah I've just come back from the river a little bit just gonna find a flat place somewhere in here to set up my tent and just chill out for a while So this is where I've decided to set up my camp. As you can see, someone else has already had a campfire here next to this giant rock. And I've set up my tent. Yep, pretty good space. It's uh, sheltered by some trees and this rock. And uh, just getting the last of the daylight at the moment. So it's still nice and warm, but it, that'll drop off pretty shortly. And yeah, in the morning, I gotta go that way. Oh man, it's gonna be a hard day tomorrow. All right, so I've just unpacked my entire bag. So everything is empty now. And as you can see, yeah, Rook 65, 65 liter bag. It's the, I think it's like an entry level um, in terms of its pricing. Um, like it's not extravagant, but it's got a lot of really great features. Um, I mean, I'm no expert, but I mean, this is pretty cool. It's like a trampoline netting back. So that provides some airflow behind your back. And um, it's got some hooks in there to readjust how the straps are. Um, how high they are. Um, it's got a whole bunch of, you know, pockets and stuff everywhere. Some side pockets for um, drinks and other stuff. I put the um, sleeping mat on the side uh, when I packed my bag this morning. It's got some uh, pockets here on the hip straps as well. And it's just overall, all around a really, really good bag. It even comes with a rain um, jacket, sort of. Uh, protector for the entire bag which is actually hidden in there. Now with this bottle here I, I had some juice that I bought this morning and I've just filled it with some river water uh, just to uh, use that up if I run out of my other water which is here and uh, oh well, I've got just a bag of clothes if I need some more clothes. I've got my cooking get kit here and I'm going to use that very soon and I'll show you me using that. I haven't actually used it out in the wild before got a puffer jacket if anything else I'll use it as a pillow um, otherwise I'll use it if I get too cold and then I mean in here I've got my uh, sleeping mat it's a Kathmandu one uh, the Ascent 38 I think I've had it for a couple of years I, I got given it for as a gift so that's pretty cool um, but I want to get a small a smaller one one that packs up really really small speaking of packing small this thing here is the nature hike uh, really really small sleeping bag off AliExpress um, it just packs up really small I doubt it's gonna be very warm but that's why I have thermals just in case and I mean I have a jacket as well um, but yeah and then overall this tent uh, I got this tent from hunting and fishing in New Zealand for uh, I think it was 150 bucks can't remember uh, and I mean it's 2.3 kgs and it's technically a two-person tent but you know it's pretty good it's got some flaps every which way um, for airflow it's got you know two layers so that's pretty cool and um, yeah that's pretty much me just beautiful short grass all along here the sun setting behind that hill there and it is just so beautiful. Just, you know, ignore that pile of bones right there. <laughs> Alright, so it's about 6.30 right now. The sun will be gone probably less than 10 minutes. Uh, it's already pretty much gone from my tent over here. So, I'm going to set up my uh, stove system, boil some water, and uh, I'm, I've got some honey soy chicken. Uh, in a freeze dry bag thing. Um, so I'm going to boil the water to rehydrate that and that'll be my dinner. So I'll, uh, I'll show you that process. Yeah, it'll be my first time cooking with it as well. So it should go, should go well. So welcome back to cooking with the Lost Kiwi. Here I have 
Uh, ignore the labels. This is a one litre bottle of river water. Very nice. Here is backcountry cuisine, uh, honey soy chicken. This is a two serving because I'm a big boy and I need a lot of food. Put that down. This is a 360 degrees something stove. As you can see. Pretty nice, pretty nice. And the rest of it is in this this sack here. In the middle of all of this we have our gas uh, canister. Right, the rest of this stuff is my big pot, it's 850 mils. Right, so this is what we do. Take the cap off the fuel and we want to align the valve onto the top of it by screwing it on. I'm scared there, <laughs> it makes noises when it's uh, sealing the uh, valve because it starts leaking gas really quickly. We've got our pot here, 850 mils. We're gonna fill it Yep. We're going to follow the instructions first off. How much water do we need? Add 500 mils of boiling water to meal pouch. Stir and stand for 10 to 15 minutes. So, about half of this. So, to light this thing, I'm going to start a flame and start turning this out. Oh man! This thing's are loud! See, it's kind of getting there, and man, there's a lot of heat coming from it. Now I'm going to prepare this so I can pour the hot water straight into it. See that? Freeze dry. It's pretty much boiling now. So, I'm going to turn the stove off. Nice. Got my boiling water, and we're just going to pour it straight in. And we're going to seal her up. It's got a zip, a zip seal at the top. It says to stir, but I already closed it up, so I'm going to shake it around a bit. Wow, what an experience. I've never done that before. That was pretty cool. And this just says to wait for a while, so I guess I'll see you when it's done. Alright, so it's been about, what, 10 minutes? Probably ready to crack it open. Right. Probably be able to just open it from the seal again. And there we go. Look at that. The life of a tramper. It's interesting. I mean, it was always going to be interesting being freeze dried. But it's actually pretty tasty. So I'm happy with that. Alright. Let me eat this in peace. And as you can see, as I was cooking and eating, the sun is set. Excuse the smoke. <laughs> Interesting flavour. It's, pepper, it's peppermint tea with river water and a hint of smoke. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let the fire burn out now. It's eight o'clock. And yeah, it's twilight. The moon's up there. It's gonna keep getting darker and darker. So, tomorrow morning, what do I do? Plan on waking up. I be I'll set an alarm for eight o'clock. That sounds good. I'll be making some baked beans for breakfast. I've got a tin of it. 
and I'm gonna have to find a way to open it somehow so that should be nice that'll warm me up in the morning other food I have are an apple I've got some licorice some lollies to eat tonight and yeah another music bar so yeah enough to last me until tomorrow when I get back to my car alright I don't know if you can see me you can probably only see me when I blind myself with my torch um, but yeah I, it's about 11 o'clock now and I am going to bed I've been watching Netflix for a couple hours and yeah so it's really dark outside it's definitely gotten cold the sleeping bag is definitely very thin and quite cold as well so I've rugged up in thermal gear and as you can see I'm wearing a beanie and I've set an alarm for 8 o'clock so I will see you when I wake up then good night morning. Man, I slept in a little bit after my alarm because I didn't get a very good sleep last night and so I didn't want to compensate for that by sleeping in a little bit. I'm a little bit sore, definitely quite tired but um, it looks like a beautiful day. Um, yeah, my sleeping bag was really cold. Uh, even though I was wearing a puffer jacket, thermals, and woolly socks. Yeah, it was definitely a bit cold. I can't wait to get the sleeping bag liner, so that'll make it a lot warmer. I'm sure it'll be, that sleeping bag would be fine during summer, um, when the nights are about 20 degrees. Um, but last night was about, oh, uh, probably five degrees maybe. Um, it feels like about, 10 degrees right now um, but yeah sleeping bag liner would make it way warmer alright so I've got a big day ahead of me now uh, so I better get some food into me I'm gonna make some baked beans now I've got to be honest with you I'm a bit of an idiot sometimes I brought obviously a can of baked beans but nothing to open it with apart from a pocket knife yeah, we've got a can opener of sorts, so, uh... Alright, that'll have to do. <laughs> I've got a hole in it, so... Sweet. It started cooking so fast, probably burnt the bottom of it a bit, but yeah, nice and hot, nice and quick. Alright, so I'm packing up my tent right now, and I've packed up my sleeping gear. Got the tent top out to dry over there, and yeah, I've just got to pack my bag back up and, um, and head off. It's about 10.40 right now, uh, so I've definitely been, you know, a bit lazy this morning. <laughs> haven't really um, been in a rush but yeah I've got a big climb ahead of me and then a big day I've got about 16 kilometers of, of walking and the first 3 k's is straight uphill and that's going to take me a long time but it's a beautiful day hopefully I don't get sunburned but yeah should be right I'm just going to pack up the tent and then going to have to do a river crossing so um See how that goes. It's a little bit lighter than yesterday, but still very heavy. And I've got very sore shoulders and and actually hip bones where these. Uh, attached to so I don't know it's gonna be a hell of a day now for a river crossing here we go I'm gonna put my shoes on after the river because I'm not gonna wear wet shoes all day 
It is so cold. Yeah, just over knee deep as well. Thankfully it's not as strong here as it is upstream a bit. Ah, Jesus. My legs are so cold. Oh, that was the easy part of the day, I guess. goes pretty much just up through there. I can see an orange triangle. You probably can't. It's pretty small, but uh, you go straight up there essentially. It's 20 past 11 and here we go. Straight up the hill. I've got 800 meters to climb. And that's only until I get to the top. Then after that, I have to walk another 10 k's or more along the ridge line. I'm going back to the car park. Uh, I do not have enough supplies or time or energy for that matter to make it uh, the other way uh, to get all the way to the big mountain, uh, Mount Hector. So I'm gonna have to do Mount Hector another day, unfortunately, but either way, uh, I've, I've got a lot of climb to go and yeah, I don't want to push myself too far, too hard. Ah, I am about 400 meters up. It's taken about an hour. So halfway, more or less. And look at what I'm dealing with. I mean, it's beautiful here, but these hills are extremely steep and it is just constant, non-stop, basically. So, yeah, straight up through there now. Jesus. I don't know if you can see it, but right there in the center of the screen through the trees and out in the light is the other side of the valley. And I can see a red roof and that's the hut. It was Tutuwai Hut that I stayed close to last night. Getting higher and higher and the trees are changing as well. They're a lot smaller and the canopy is a lot more open and especially on the ground there's loads of moss just everywhere. Anyway, you can see just ahead of me up this hill the sky is opening up a little bit more so I've, I think I only have another kilometer until the very top of the hill uh, and another 250 meters to climb. So I mean the worst is behind me now, but still a little bit to go. But yeah, really taking it easy. I just took another 10 minute break. I finally got high enough to get cell phone reception as well. So that's good. Woohoo, look at that. Beautiful blue sky. No wind, perfect day. Crazy. And there we go. There's a nice view. Oh man. All right, I am at the summit, finally, Jesus man, two hours, <sighs> when I do get a good view I'll show you, but for now I'm gonna have a little break and eat some lunch, uh, I've still got a long way to go after now. So for lunch I have these uh, an OSM bar and a green apple. And that's it. That's all my food gone. It's partly why I couldn't stay another day to get to the mountain, to the top of Mount Hector, which is that way. Don't have enough food. Beautiful. I don't know if you could see that, but that was part of the view. I couldn't see it, by the way. I had to get the selfie stick a bit higher. 
Woohoo! All the way down there is Wellington City with Upper Hutt and Lower Hutt in the foreground. And in terms of what I have to go, I have to get all the way up over that ridge and down even further. I have a very long way to go, about 13 kilometers. So it is two o'clock right now, 13 k's to go. It's gonna be late by the time I get back, probably six o'clock, but thankfully it's mostly downhill. Um, there are some pieces of uphill, unfortunately, and then I have to go back downhill afterwards. Um, but I'm going to try and make good progress. I'm a bit sore, but it won't be too much climb, so I should be able to make up ground. This mossy forest is crazy. It's straight out of the Lord of the Rings, pretty much. It's actually quite tough though, because it's lots of roots and rocks and mud uh, to walk over. Lots of trees to walk around. It's definitely not easy, as easy as I thought it would be. Thankfully I'm under the shade, so I can't get sunburnt as easily. I just stopped really quickly because I heard something. And then I caught a really brief glimpse, way down in there, of some deer. So, that's cool. <laughs> uh, still such a long way to go. Still got to get over the top of there, and then some. It's been about an hour since I left off from my break. Uh, so it's almost three o'clock now, and I've done about two and a half k kilometers uh, out of the 12, so it kind of puts me at arriving back at my car uh, at around seven o'clock, if all things go well. So it's a little bit late, but that'll be fine. Um, I've got some juice waiting for me in the car, so can't wait to get back and have that. Otherwise, just as I'm walking here, uh, my shoes have been amazing for this trip. My um, Salomon Speedcross 5s. Yeah, they've been super grippy, super comfortable, and they've definitely saved me a couple times from slipping over. Uh, so yeah, they were expensive, but they are definitely definitely really really good shoes my pack has been pretty good as well I mean it's probably loaded a little bit too heavy for me um, and I mean I need to just pack a little lighter next time um, but it's been pretty good as well um, the straps have been a little bit sore on my uh, shoulders and my waist and my knees are, and my and my hips are a little bit sore as well but um, the, the pack itself has been pretty good and I mean once I get used to it and with a bit more experience I'm sure it'll be amazing. Uh, just had another 10 minute break um, and it is about half past four and I am breaking honestly I am so sore I can barely walk. <laughs> And that's not a good thing. I still have about 7k's to go. So, I think the thing for me to do is just keep going. No other options really. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to push through. Hopefully, once I get walking again, my legs will um, loosen up a bit again. I'll be able to walk faster. But yeah, it's a huge day. I think I bit off a bit more than I can chew. My hip of my right leg is stuffed 
so is my knee. So it makes walking with that leg quite painful. And I've just started to get cramps on the upper thigh of my left leg, which, I mean, that's not good either. I was using that leg. Um, yeah, still 7Ks to go. And it's 4.45, so I think the best thing for me to do is just to keep going, take it easy, try not to injure myself anymore and just, just persevere. But man, this is definitely hard. Am I seeing things or is that a purple mushroom? I might as well be seeing things. I am so sore and I'm going to take another break in about 500 meters when I get down to the bottom of this track and then I've still got another, after that, another 5Ks. <sighs> I'm, I'm still pushing through though. It's very difficult. Uh, oh well, wish me luck. Finally made it to the track junction. So that track there takes us back down to Smith Creek Shelter, of course, where I was yesterday. Alpha Hut, I didn't quite make it to there. Kaitoki Road End, that's where I'm going. I think it's about 5Ks and it should take me just over another hour. I should get there by just past 7 o'clock. really interesting, I haven't actually come across any other trampers this entire trip except for one that I saw leaving the car park just before me. But I do see footprints on the ground, especially in the muddy areas like that, and they are relatively fresh so uh, people have been here and I mean I am closer to the car park here so it's probably more, more popular for people to walk here. We have a much, much nicer track now. Uh, no more routes and obstacles to trip over. Still got about 2Ks to go. And it is 10 past 7. Getting quite late. The sun is still up, but it'll be setting in about 40 minutes. I'm still feeling fine, actually. It's amazing. I haven't gotten any worse, but I'm still limping a little. And uh, just persevering though, gotta keep going. Don't really have any other option. Beautiful sunset. And finally, here we are at the very last track junction. And as you can see, I've got 1.5 k's to go. Another 30 minutes. All right, about 750 meters to go. My hip and my leg actually both feel way better. I actually have no idea why. It's actually quite strange, it's like, Maybe I've got the adrenaline or something now. Um, but I can guarantee they're going to be sore tomorrow. <sighs> Finally. After two huge days of tramping. I am back at my car. And now I can, well, first drive back home. And then relax. Ah, oh, man. My watch, my Fitbit, it tells me that uh, I've done 37,000 steps just today uh, with 28 and a half kilometers and about eight hours non stop of, of being active and walking. Uh, I've also climbed 420 steps or uh, well, floors, which equates to about 1,200 meters, I think. Oh man. What a giant tramp. It's probably the hardest tramp I've ever done, to be honest. I'm back just after sunset, and 
I am absolutely smashed. But uh, yeah, thanks for sticking with it. And yeah, <laughs> it's been a hard one. Finally, I can drink my juice. Shelby's River Water. <laughs> 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 